Ad sequencing is a video campaign subtype within Google Ads. It essentially allows you to create a branded journey for users depending on what actions they have taken with previous video engagement. In this video, we'll show you what campaign objectives can use ad sequencing. We'll walk through a full campaign setup so you really know the underlyings of how this campaign subtype works because there is some fine print that you can miss. The first step for creating an ad sequencing campaign is not necessarily what you expect, but most likely if you're already running video campaigns within Google Ads, you have this step completed. But I do want to cover it for anyone that's new because it's absolutely crucial. And that is making sure that your YouTube account is connected with Google Ads. In order to do that, go to Tools and then find Data Manager. We already have ours connected, but if you don't, go up to Connect Product. You would just be able to search for it here and then go through the steps to find the YouTube channel and connect it to your account. Now, the reason that this is important is that you cannot create an ad sequencing step unless you have a YouTube channel linked to your Google Ads account. That's why it's absolutely crucial. So before we even begin trying to create an ad sequencing campaign, just make sure that you have the YouTube channel connected. Okay, now we can begin with the campaign setup. So let's go back to campaigns and we'll start creating a new campaign. Now for ad sequencing, there are two objectives where you will be allowed to do it. The first is going to be awareness and consideration. Then you would want to choose video and then scrolling down, you will see the subtype of ad sequence. The other option scrolling back up is to create a campaign without a goals guidance. Here we would want video again, and then it also gives us the subtype further down below of ad sequence. Now highlighting the description of ad sequence, it's letting you know that it's only available for in-stream ads, whether it's skippable, non-skippable, as well as the non-skippable six second bumper ads. So also make sure that you have video formats that work better for this campaign subtype. I already said six second bumper ads, that's pretty straightforward. I have another video talking about non-skippable in-stream ads. You can check that one out here. That one has further details. Those are gonna be around 15 seconds or less. And then there's more leeway with your skippable in-stream ads. Yes, you could run longer in-stream ads that are minutes long. Really not recommended. Try to keep it around that 30 second length. But now that we have our campaign subtype, we can just go to continue. First, I'll just change the name. Okay, there we go. As for bid strategy, we have two options. The default is gonna be target CPM or cost per 1000 impressions, but you could change it to maximum CPV. As for budget and dates, it's gonna to default to campaign total, but you do have the option to run a daily budget. Just gonna put something here. And if you'd like, you can include an end date. If you leave it as is, the campaigns will continue to run every single day until you decide to pause them. As for the networks, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We have to choose YouTube. Google TV is not included. Video partners are not included. So they're at least showing this, but we can't change it. Ad sequencing only stays on the YouTube network. Always a win in my book. So scrolling down, choose your locations, your languages, and then define your initial targeting. Yes, there's demographics, but when you're starting off a sequence, most likely you wanna reach a specific audience first. How are you going to start the sequence? You can go up to browse and then use any of the targeting options available for video campaigns. Detailed demographics, affinity audiences, in-market audiences, any sort of retargeting, custom segments, combined with all the other options, those sort of things. Just for this video, I'm gonna choose one of the YouTube targeting options and let's just start off with our subscribers. You don't have to start off with any sort of retargeting. If you're looking to reach a brand new audience, this is a great campaign subtype to do that. That's why the other campaign objective for ad sequencing was awareness and consideration. That is a big purpose of this campaign, to show them multiple videos. You're trying to influence the user to eventually perform some sort of action down the line. But after your targeting is set, you do have the option to choose related videos this is an ad asset that I do have another video for. You can watch it right here. I still like to call them ad extensions, essentially encouraging users to watch more videos after they've seen your video ad or even during. But if I look at additional settings, devices, something I wanna talk about really quick in any sort of video action campaign, if I don't have a QR code that's part of the video, a lot of times I do turn TV screens off because it is harder for viewers to perform a certain action when watching YouTube ads on a TV device. However, this is awareness. We're just trying to get users to view the video. In any case where I'm looking at awareness, I always leave TV screens on. 
it really helps the flow of ad sequencing the more people you get to view the specific videos. So I'm leaving all devices on. To me, frequency capping is not as important because we'll be able to set certain limitations within the sequencing itself. You'll see it. But next, you'll get to choose the template of how you want to create the video sequence. For this video, I'm just going to show you custom sequence. But clearly, you can see there are other options. Automatic, you're giving Google control. You're going to create several video ads. Google's going to make the order. We see introduce and reinforce. You start off with a long video to introduce the brand and then shorter videos to keep your brand on top of mind. The flip side is prompt and inspire. Shorter videos first, then longer ones. Attract and direct. Quickly capture their attention with short video. Expire them with longer video and then shorter videos after that to try to perform a certain action. And then engage and differentiate using four short video ads. I already have custom sequence selected, so we're gonna stick with that and go on to step one. Here's the part where you will get stuck if you don't have your YouTube channel connected to Google Ads. So let's click on new step, and I'm glad they're showing this to us right away. Every step that you create in a sequence is going to be an ad group within the ad sequence campaign. You can still call your ad groups whatever you want it to be to help you understand what you're showing, probably include the video name in it. In addition to, with the step one, I like to call out what audience I'm targeting. Better helps you understand who you're initially trying to reach. Okay, now let's choose a certain video. I'm just using what we have in our channel. No, I would not show a 15 minute video to an audience. Let's just assume it's a nice 15 to 30 second video ad. Since it is an in-stream ad, we still get the call to action extension. So I can include that here. There's the call to action. I'm just gonna choose something right now. Companion banner. It's gonna use your YouTube channel banner. Put in the bid for this ad group, and then we'll add it to the sequence. So in the first step, I'm targeting people who subscribe to the YouTube channel over the past 540 days. That was the remarketing audience I selected, and I'm showing them this specific video. Now, after a view is performed of this video for that audience, we can choose what we want to show them next. So let's create step two, which we see will be another ad group. Now I actually misspoke, but as we see in the step above, it doesn't necessarily have to be a view. If you just want an impression, that could be another step. I will stick with view, but you have the option to have skip too. If they didn't like a certain video, maybe it gives you the opportunity to show something else, see what's gonna engage with them better. Just gonna name it something to show what the second step is. Again, a super long video, I get it. I'm gonna skip all the call to action setup and everything, but finish adding all your companion banners and everything, add your bid, and then we can add it to the sequence. Now notice, we can keep adding and create a big web or tree. And you can expand this sequence. And since it's a custom sequence, we can expand upon this pretty well. But let me go over this fake scenario of why I'm doing it. Let's say Michelle and I are trying to promote our lead gen course that we created a while ago. Maybe we just want to introduce people to what we know about lead generation in terms of paid media. All right, and maybe we have a decent amount of people viewing this initial ad. If you watched this video or viewed it, then we're gonna show you another video, still related to lead gen, but a different topic. I'm trying to showcase that we know our stuff in terms of lead gen. I could continue to add a variety of lead gen videos that we have, but maybe for this last step, I finally teased the lead gen course intro video that we made. There I renamed the ad group. This time, I'll change the URL to the actual course. I'm not saying every single sequence that you have to create needs to be just three steps. It's up to you to determine the goal of the campaign and how many times you think you need to interact with your target audience before you think it's right to start introducing action. Since I started off with a remarketing audience, I'd probably be more comfortable asking for the action earlier on in a sequence. That's because they're already familiar with our brand. So one, they're already subscribing to our channel. I'm showing them a couple videos to reinforce the trust, to reinforce the knowledge, and then I'm gonna promote the course. If you're starting off with an in-market audience, an even higher level affinity audience that's a lot more broad, most likely you're gonna need several other steps before they're willing to take action. If they don't know who they are, why would they convert after seeing one video? That's where some of the other custom templates might be better for you. But of course, if I'm promoting action, I would definitely add the call to action extension, all that stuff. I just wanna get this option done, and then we'll add it to the sequence. And here you can see, I can continue to add new steps for skipping. I realize I forgot to change this to view, whatever. Add new steps, 
that is fine. Now, before you create the campaign, one thing. An impression, easy to understand. The ad was just shown to the user. Skipping, the user skipped the ad in any way. A view is going to count if they watched at least 30 seconds of the ad or the entire thing. Now, when we were creating these ads, I did decide in certain cases to add the call to action button as well as companion banners. Any clicks on those will count as a view within your sequence. While you can change this stuff later on, after the campaign goes live, it can skew some of the reporting later. So I try to have everything set up exactly how I want it to be. Notice if I hover over some of the metrics, I can update it, change the step transition. I'm gonna leave it as is for now, just so we can keep on moving. All right, then we'll go to the overview. Okay, I'm gonna click into the campaign. Here we see each step within the ad group. If you don't update the ad group names, you will be able to see the steps within the name, I do believe, but I always update it, but clearly this makes it a lot easier to see. Now, if you don't use the step one, two, three naming convention, we see the special column for ad sequencing campaigns in terms of the sequence path. Green is for view, blue is for impression, red would be skip. So if you are adding multiple steps after a certain sequence, you'd be able to see it. It doesn't have to be this clean of a one, two, three. There's our bids. You can always go to your columns, choose any of the default video view columns, or modify them to include any other video metrics, possibly conversion metrics, that are important to you to see if the sequence is working. Now, for whatever reason, if you want to change anything related to the sequence, go back to the campaign view. Let's go into the campaign settings where the gear icon is. And here we can view and edit sequence steps, similar to the last step that we saw before we launched the campaign. If I hover over one of the videos, there we see we can edit the step, so on and so on. Another way to do it is to go to ads. If you click on the pencil button, you can edit the ad. Notice there is a warning. Even if it's something as simple as a URL change, some stats could refresh. Technically, you could also change out the video in a step, but I definitely do not recommend that. It will mess up the sequence. Any lift measurement could break, or you're just gonna get inaccurate numbers. People could miss steps. They could repeat certain steps within a sequence, and it's not gonna be clean reporting. I'm gonna cancel out of this and just repeat that. I think it's okay to change the sequence path. If you wanna change it from impression to view, potentially add skip steps, those things I'm okay with. Changing the whole video, I don't recommend it. I would just rather start over clean with a brand new campaign if you messed up and you need to just test a whole nother video. A couple other things to note about ad sequencing campaigns is that if you are using any of these videos within your sequence in other campaigns, views from those other campaigns will count towards any of your ad sequencing campaigns. It makes sense, right? If someone saw this landing page video already in another campaign, I don't wanna show it to them again. I wanna keep them moving further along in the process. So that's something to note that in this case, we started off with a retargeting audience, but a lot of other people are seeing this middle video. I can't assume everything after came from this initial retargeting audience. In terms of optimization, while we cannot target topics, placements, or keywords, you still can use those targeting options as exclusions only at the campaign level. But that's the basic structure of an ad sequencing campaign. It's really up to you to decide what the best video journey would be for your users and then choosing the right columns to assess what you think would be considered a success. I'm gonna stress, use better videos than I have that actually fit the in-stream ad format. I'm just using what we have just to show you what you could do. And like any video campaign, the creative is really gonna be the main driver for success. Ideally, you would have a variety of different variants to keep testing. Running one sequence with one set of video creative for several months at a time may not lead to much. A really good ad sequencing campaign really relies on testing a variety of creative at several different steps. But if you have any other questions about YouTube ad sequencing within Google Ads, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.